of <laughs> of streaming outside of actually just the actual stream because to be honest with you the actual stream is the easy part um which if you guys have questions about actually streaming stuff like that we can handle that in the qa session but most of this is all the work that goes into streaming outside of twitch um meaning all the stuff all the work you have to put in speaking of let's get back to it so we are back talking about keeping your viewers loyal uh which you know if you guys were looking at the previous slides you know it's uh you know mostly about this you know just keeping them on a leash um but we're talking about twitch bots so i made my own bot um there's plenty of other bots out there there's a uh, sandbot there's deep bot there's moo bot there's night bot there's a ton of bots out there and to be honest with you get yourself one um it was one of the most rewarding things i got to keep uh, viewers loyal froster did it recently um, he, he's keeping people loyal that way. Um, W Grace did it. To be honest with you, a lot of people love, love, love those in chat currencies. Like they love going, oh my God, I have this little thing. I don't know what to do with it, but I'm earning these things by watching the stream. And watching the streams with like, oh my God, I have Smashbox or whatever is unbelievably awesome for people, keeping people either in your stream at all times or keeping people coming back. It's a huge thing. And so as you can see, there's still people in chat right now who are betting their smash bucks on a roulette table that I made. Now, I think Deepot has has a roulette table as well. There's a few other things that you can literally keep people coming back just to earn it. Now, a lot of them try to earn it for giveaways. Um, and giveaways are a huge thing for a lot of people to get new people there. Um, it also allows you to reward your existing viewers and that's kind of what it's used for. So. Yeah, KDOT's won all the Smash Bucks. Now he's like super ecstatic because he has like 170,000 imaginary currency. <laughs> it has no value at all. We made up Smash Bot. We made up Smash Bucks. And yet there's people who are literally addicted to gambling and addicted to the stuff that it gives you because they're just so excited about it. And that's one of the things like you can get that too very easily. So look into getting a new bot, get looking to get a Zan bot or anything like that. And it will really, really help out your stream. Um, the other thing is making merch. I have no merch. It drives me fucking crazy. I want merch so bad because I know what it can do for you. You are making a brand, which is what we're going to be getting to in a bit. We're going to be talking about it. But merchandise is fucking huge. Do you know like how loyal your viewers feel when they have a shirt? or a coffee mug or something like that. Like how loyal to a stream do you feel if you're drinking out of a fucking coffee mug while watching them? Like that person is gonna be coming back just because all of a sudden they'll remember looking at the, you know, going to get their coffee in the morning. They're gonna be like, oh my God, I haven't watched Smashly in forever. You know, I haven't, or they gotta wear that shirt because they love that fucking shirt. You make a bomb ass shirt and you're like, oh my God, I haven't watched them in forever. Let me go back and watch them. Or, or I watched them yesterday. Let's go watch them again. You know, that sort of thing. So like having merchandise is fucking huge. And I have none. I have none. I need some. Like we've, we've been struggling to find time to make one, to be honest with you. Um, actually, Dark, if you are here, Dark made a coffee mug preview for you guys. And I wanted, this is one of the things I wanted to, to, to let you guys know about. And I'll put it up on stream here in a bit if Dark wants to give me the link in mod chat. And I'll show you guys here in a bit the coffee mug <laughs> that that we uh that we've been like that we're thinking of releasing which is really awesome which is the the coffee recipe so yeah there's that um also sub emotes if you guys get partnered this is a huge huge thing of keeping your people loyal um we have some awesome emotes we have a fantastic emotes that i paid a lot of money for <laughs> to be honest with you i also designed some myself the first five emotes i designed myself um but there's a lot of a lot of goodness that can come in getting your 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 viewers loyal by having a mouse that you can literally spread out all across Twitch. Now, even if you don't have a sub button and you're looking to get that sub button, you also have better Twitch TV emotes. Now, I didn't use any, and I still don't use better Twitch TV emotes, but it does keep people loyal with the fact that they come into your chat and they want to use those emotes. They're awesome. Make sure you have good emotes. Now, you do not have to make them themed. You don't have to make them awesome. I mean, well, sorry, you do have to make them awesome. You don't have to make them themed. You don't have to make them all the same. You don't have to make them all that good stuff. The thing I would suggest doing more so than keeping them all the same theme is literally have them all emotes that everyone wants to use. Now we still have a few that are like, you know, the greed emote, 
We use it pretty often, but I want to get rid of the word greed on it. I wanted to just be Smashbox, like I just wanted to be Bucks, because to be honest with you, like people could use that everywhere. You want to have emotes that if you do have your sub button or you're working on getting your sub button, you want to have emotes that people want to use everywhere. Like you want people to use those emotes everywhere you see it, because not only does that have your viewers loyal to you going, I'm only like, I want to keep coming back to the stream. I want to sub to the stream. I want to keep my sub to the stream because of the emotes. But it also allows you to have free advertisement. Every time you use a fucking bomb ass emote that someone else wants, they're like, where did you get that? <laughs> where did you get that emote? And so you, you basically get free advertisement if you have bomb ass emotes, which if Mav Show is still here, she has like literally I subbed to her not only because she's fucking awesome, but I wanted to sub to her because she had a fucking emote that said, SUCK IT NERDS! I mean, that literally alone right there is like, come on, if you have even just one emote that's like fucking amazing, it can literally keep not only people loyal, but give you free advertisement, which is really awesome. So really, really work on, you know, like think about the emotes you have. Don't just make ones that you want to use, make ones that everyone wants to use everywhere. It's pretty much, it's pretty much the best thing I can tell you guys to do for that. And yes, like RNG, um, the raid emote, but that was like, we had the raid emote before Twitch decided to introduce the Twitch raid emote, the little bomb or whatever, even though it doesn't say raid, which that was one of the reasons why we made a raid emote. Now the butt emote was literally because I was sitting there going, well, we have clinch emotes. There's like a bunch of clinch emotes on Twitch. And at the time I didn't know that uh, Shana Nina had, had a butt emote at the time. <laughs> and so literally we created the second butt emote on Twitch that I knew of. And and we kind of started a trend. Like there's a ton of butt emotes on, on Twitch now because it's ridiculous. Like everybody saw the butt emote and like, oh my God, we can use this for everything. Like you can just put a butt in chat. You can talk about clenching. You can talk about ridiculous. You can talk about that ass. <laughs> You can talk about all sorts of different things and the butt emote was literally like that is like one of the keys. Also the Shia LaBeouf do it, even though that's kind of phased out. A lot of people don't use it. Some people do, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, there's, there's, there's butt emotes. Like when we were playing Mass Effect 2 the other night, like the, the amount of times the butt emote got spammed anytime a random was on screen was fucking awesome. <laughs> so, you know, like. Not only like thinking about what emotes everybody could use is awesome. Like really like, like when you're making emotes, don't just think about it. also pay for your emotes. This is one of those things that people were talking about. Like people were talking about like how much money have you put back into streaming? A lot of money back into streaming. And a lot of it is like paying for stuff like this. Um, it's talking about paying for emotes. Like I spent a quite a, quite a large amount of money on emotes. Um, I'd probably say we spend probably like $300 in total on all the emotes that we have. Now, keep in mind that we have a bunch of emotes on standby for if we ever get more emotes. If we ever get more emotes or we need to replace one or we want to replace one or that sort of thing. We have a ton of emotes kind of just like in the emote vault because we paid for them because we wanted a variety. We wanted you guys to pick. We wanted the good emotes. <laughs> Do it will never be phased out. Okay, apparently to my chat, do it will never be phased out. So fair enough. Fair enough. I like it too. I use it all the time too. So I can't I can't really see myself phasing it out anytime soon. So um let's talk about rulers. Let's talk about spanking. I mean rulers. Uh so here's the deal. Um we're talking about what this section is all about is how to judge. Are we growing yet? Are we actually growing? I mean, we got we got stream traffic. Is it doing anything? Is it actually doing anything? So let's talk about stream traffic. This is the thing that I literally I'm going to come back to this all the fucking time. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this all the time. You need people coming by your stream, period. You need people coming by your stream and saying, hey, Ash, what's up? You need people to combat the, the decay that we already talked about. You need people coming by so then you could show them how much of a bomb ass streamer you are because you all are and showing people, Hey, I'm a cool ass streamer. You want to follow me without actually saying that, because if you say that, then people are going to be like, wow, what a sellout. <laughs> so we need stream traffic. Now, how do you measure stream traffic though? That's the thing. Like, how do we know, are we getting stream traffic? 
Like, I'm playing the right game, I feel like. I'm playing this thing, but I'm not getting any follows. Are we getting stream traffic? So there's a couple sites that you can use for this. Uh, one is Social Blade. If you're not already on Social Blade, go by there, go ahead and have it look at your look at your Twitch channel. It needs to go ahead and get a baseline measurement if you haven't ever been there before, no one else has looked at your looked at your stream before. Uh, what you see on the right is actually some of my stats. Those are shitty fucking stats. That is no stream traffic right there. But that's right from Social Blade. And we're gonna talk about it because what you're seeing here on the right hand side is these numbers right here. These are brand new viewers. This is the change in viewership. This is my overall viewers numbers. And this is the change in viewership. And these are brand new unique viewers, meaning brand new people that have never seen my stream before. So it's letting us know, hey, we got some stream traffic, but what you really wanna shoot for as a brand new streamer is actually these about, about these numbers. What you wanna shoot for as an established streamer is higher than this, period. You wanna look for more. Always want this number to be more. Always, always. This is your stream traffic. These are brand new people coming by your stream. This doesn't include existing people. So make sure you guys are looking for how to get this number higher. Um, and if you don't want to use Social Blade, you can just look at the difference, record your starting Holy viewership, shit. and look at the difference between the viewership of when you start the stream and when you end the stream. And that's going to let you know, hey, how many unique people did I get to come by here? So definitely check out Social Blade. Also look at your Twitch analytics. You can take a look at your average viewer, your concurrent viewership. It's going to let you know, hey, did we do good today? Did we have a lot of people here today? Because here's why I say use Twitch analytics. If you have the stream up and have a way to see your, your viewership numbers while you're streaming, turn that shit off. Turn that shit off. Do not, do not, do not look at your numbers while you're streaming. Turn that shit off. Look at it afterwards. Go, did I stream good today? Was chat active today? If you're looking at those numbers, it's only gonna affect you negatively. It will only affect you negatively. Here's why. You'll either look at your numbers and go, oh my God, there's only 10 people in here. Why are there only 10 people in here? And then you're gonna shut up. You're not gonna be talking, which is gonna make your stream worse. Then those 10 people are gonna leave and you're gonna hate your life. <laughs> or the other flip side of it, you're either gonna be at your average numbers. You're gonna be like, oh, well, we're only average right now. That sucks. I mean, kind of wish I was growing more. Or here we go again. We have way more than we normally have. Oh God, I'm nervous. There's 400 people in my chat right now. What would I do? Instead of just streaming, it literally takes the focus away from you for just streaming. So turn that shit off and then use Twitch analytics afterwards. Go look at your dashboard and look at the Twitch analytics afterwards and take a look at your numbers and look at it afterwards. Don't look at that shit during the stream. It's gonna fuck you up. Don't do that. Turn that shit off. Find a way to turn that shit off and only have the chat. Use chatting if you have to. Don't turn on the channel info. Yeah, here for a laugh, no problem. So here's the thing. The Twitch numbers suck though. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you're looking at your stream later and you're looking at the Twitch analytics and you're going, oh, I only had, you know, like a hundred people in my chat today. And you're looking at it and going, what the fuck, dude? Like, I could have sworn I was doing better. That's the thing. If you felt like you were doing better, you probably were. That's the thing. If you're looking at your numbers going, why did I only have like, you know, this many people? Sometimes Twitch records viewers wrong. Sometimes Twitch looks at... Sometimes Twitch looks at your concurrent viewers and says, you have this number of people in your chat and you feel like you really had a lot more. Maybe your chat was more active that day. Maybe that sort of thing. That's why I tell you to say, look at stream traffic. Did you pick the right game that day? Did you, the stream traffic is all about, did I pick the right game today? Did I have the right title? Did I bring in enough clickbait? <laughs> I mean, sometimes that's what it's all about. It's clickbait. Um, the other thing that you can really, really, really take a look at and this is you can look at the peak the the follow percentage and this is the number one thing follow percentage is i cannot stress this enough if you're wondering am i being a good streamer this is what i look at you can ask my mods you can ask my mods and i use the same little graphic over here because i want to talk to you about what it means by follow percentage so i had two days back to back here i had tuesday and wednesday on on these recent days here I had Tuesday and Wednesday where one of these days was a fucking fantastic day and the other one was a shitty fucking day. And here's why you can look at these and go, oh, oops, sorry. Um, 
Here's why you can look at these and go, what do you mean one of these was a shitty day and one of these was a crappy day? Well, they both almost had the exact same number of unique people coming by. Yet yeah, on Tuesday, I got 55 fucking follows. And on Wednesday, I got 12. Doesn't that like strike you guys as anything? So here's one of the things you can, no matter how much stream traffic you're getting, if you're wondering, am I streaming good? Is my stream good? <laughs> you want to look at your follow percentage. You want to look at, hey, out of the number of unique people that drop on my stream, how many actually click the follow button? How many actually said, this is a stream I want to follow? So even if you're streaming a game like I was streaming The Division recently, even if I was streaming a game world way far down on that list, and I'm not getting any stream traffic, I can still tell, hey, I had a pretty good fucking stream because out of the people that came by, one in three hit that follow button. One in three people said, I love this fucking stream. I want to come back. And that's a good sign. Now, however, I don't know what the fuck I was doing on that Wednesday, but it fucking sucked. And that's one of those streams where I go look back and I'll go look at my past broadcast and look at Tuesday's stream and go, okay, what was I doing good here? What was I doing good just like maybe a minute or two before I got a follow train? Or look at Wednesday and go, what the fuck was I doing wrong here? Go look at your past broadcast and look and see, compare it to your follow percentage. And also guys, if you're asking questions and stuff like that, I will answer it when we get to a Q&A period. We will have a Q&A period every 45 minutes, 45 minutes ish, and we'll have it for 30 minutes or more. Um, so wait for the Q and A period. We will definitely, definitely get to it. And also, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of questions. I know you guys have definitely stick around for that. Um, like I said, I'm going to get through these sections. This will hopefully answer a lot of your questions and then we'll get to those. Um, so two, two out of 10, <laughs> two 10 with star citizen. Yes. There we go. There we go. Um, and then the other thing is looking at your peak viewership per game. This will help you decide, did I, did I pick the right game? Am I picking the right game? Because a lot of you guys are variety streamers. A lot of you guys are just like me trying to go, am I on the right game? And looking at the game and, and also realizing like, hey, sometimes we got a host. Like if you look at this day right here, you can literally see we were floating right around this and then also boom, we shut up. This was probably a host. Seeing peaks like this where it immediately drops back down a bit, definitely a host. So somewhat similar here. However, here you can see we kind of shot up and then we maintained a bit. Like we went up further. This is good. That is good. This is kind of expected, but this is exceptional. So if you're doing this on a certain day, you're like, fuck yeah, man. And you can see this is like probably this is the 10th over here or something like that. You know, we probably had higher viewership, but we had, we weren't getting anybody who was coming by to actually follow. We weren't streaming well. So Finding the right ruler to measure, hey, am I growing on Twitch? Are we building a good community? Are we actually like doing what we need to do on Twitch is the good thing. And sometimes just looking at Twitch's numbers sucks. The site says I had 300 and I don't cast on Friday. Spite ease. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I think Social Blade is actually Pacific time. Sorry, I didn't. I saw a question and I answered it. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to stick to the slides. But yes, um, it's Pacific time, actually. It's worse. Um, so, so let's talk about dates. Who wants to do